You know what I'm going to talk about. I'm talking about Card Kingdom, my sponsor. You can check them out at cardkingdom.com or click the affiliate link in my panels down below. Card Kingdom online and at their retail stores, at which I was last night at. Uh, they sell everything you need for your magic game. Uh, they are uh, offering incredible buy prices, especially with the 30% store credit if you just want to turn your old cards into new stuff. But sealed products, supplies, singles, they're all there, cardkingdom.com. And I want to I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a little story. Like, I was supposed to be camping today. I was supposed to be camping yesterday. And I got this stupid, I kind of blew out my calf over the weekend. It's feeling better, thank you. Getting there, we're getting there, one day at a time. Uh, but I had a good uh, lemons to lemonade day yesterday, and I wanted to share that with you. And because Card Kingdom was part of it, I thought this would be a good time to do it. So I was pretty bummed that um, I was not going camping with my kids. And my wife was extra bummed because she was looking forward to, frankly, two days alone at home. You know, she just wanted a little solitude and peace, a little, little mom time. So we were all going to be really happy with that. And, uh, and then it all fell through with this injury, and everybody was kind of bummed. Well, my daughter ended up being invited along in the camping trip anyway. So Clara went off uh, with our, our family friends, and she's camping right now, so good for her. And yesterday, my son and I, after this, so at first, I had a great stream yesterday. Yesterday's stream was awesome, which wouldn't have happened if uh, if I hadn't been injured and stayed home. We uh, started 1-1 and came back and went 5-1 in our draft and had a lot of fun. And then, um, oh, well, oh, sorry, Queen, we'll, uh, we'll celebrate you in a second. So uh, anyway, after the stream, I roused my son out of bed because it's summertime and he's a teenager. And we got a lot of good work done around the house. Like we spent two hours just doing hardcore good work around the home, getting chores done, getting life done. And then I let my wife know, hey, before you come home, uh, Oliver and I are going to take off and we're going to go have a uh, guy's night out and you have the home, you have the house all to yourself. So we basically gave my wife the solitude she wanted at home for herself. And my son and I decided to have a boys' night on the town together, and it involved Card Kingdom. We went to Card Kingdom, um, got some. We started with some uh, some sushi, got some Japanese food, and then went to Card Kingdom. And I conducted some business with them. I'm looking at buying some uh, really old cards and wanted to look at the condition of the cards before I bought them. So I got to. Uh, they came down and brought the uh, old cards I was considering down to me to look at. This is something they'll do if you're in the area rocket and um and then um then we went to the cafe and we played games and had ice cream uh for uh, about an hour hour and a half and then we uh then we went and saw uh spider-man far from home at the late show and by the time we came back our, my wife had already gone to bed so i had a, this amazing day yesterday card kingdom was a part of it and it was uh Life is funny sometimes. Like I was so bummed about my injury and the loss of the experience that I was looking toward, forward to in camping, but instead flipped it around and, and instead had a very memorable, uh, meaningful time with my son that was was awesome. So, oh, in fact, like on, on the way to, uh, on the way, at one point in the journey, he's like, um, he had, we were listening to some music and he's like, have you listened to uh, Dark Side of the Moon much? I'm like... <laughs> Son in high school, it was on repeat, you know. Anyway, he'd never heard he'd never he'd heard that Dark Side of the Moon was this um epic classic album and he'd never listened to it. And so I even got to introduce my son to Dark Side of the Moon last night. So it was it was great. And anyway, when life gives you lemons, etc. Thank you for the patience through that story, but um I was feeling feeling good today because I had such a great day yesterday. So let's jump in. Thanks, Card Kingdom. Ooh, hello, Mythic. I mean, we'd be taking this if it were an unplayable Mythic, but the fact that it's a 5-5 five, five flyer for five in one of the stronger cards, uh, conventional wisdom says blue is one of the stronger cards. Feels that way to me. Yeah, let's move, move the cam. Thank you. Appreciate that reminder. Bing. 
into Meteor Golem. Tomebound uh, plays with our first pick. So does this, of course. What do you think? The uh, heavy color requirement, or uh, but three mana, or the no color requirement? It's really a bit effectively a black card since it goes with a Cavalier. I think I'm into Lich, but Golem is hard to argue with. Hmm, let's see where's people at. We got... Does Golem keep you from locking into another color? Absolutely, right? I mean, it's not another color. So, I mean, and really, Tonebound Lich does not lock us into another color either. We're not even, if we take Tonebound Lich, we could end up green blue, or uh, I mean, green red, you know, like, so, yeah, uh, I think seven mana is fine. All right, I'm gonna go with Golem in a tight one. I don't think you're too far off uh, either way there. Well, we take, let's see. Gift of Paradise is a decent, decently strong card. Um, Dagger Sail Aeronaut, uh, having this kind of attacking in red is pretty cool, but we're, we're in blue. We expect to get, or oh, we're in blue right now. We might get flyers that way. Uh, Pattern Matcher was an MVP yesterday, but I don't feel the need to go into it now. Uh, it's something we might even wheel. That's the other thing it wheeled yesterday. Um, Spitfire Sprite from Fiddles. Yeah, this pack is not great. I mean, you could even justify Noxious Grasp as really the best card in the pack just out of the sideboard. I kind of like, uh, kind of like the Grasp try wheeling the Pattern Matcher. There's nothing much here. This is just the best card and it's best two of three. So I'm going to take it. It's a really weak pack. Uh, if we do end up black, the Gorging Vulture is fine. What's this? Oh, we don't, I don't like that Gauntlets. This just seems okay. Uh, uh, spider, Ashes, and Vulture feel like the best cards here. Uh, we don't need to worry about this card at all. We should just be taking the, the best card here, which may be Spider. Maybe Vulture. Uh, I don't prioritize Bone Splinters because unless you are specifically building around the ability to create fodder for it, you don't want too many. So I think if this is a middling removal spell that I don't prioritize early in pack one, uh, I hope that if I'm black, I pick one of these up uh, later, you know, whereas vultures, I'll take as many as I can get if I'm in black, basically. Not as many, but you know what I mean. So, like, that's the, the, the difference there. How highly should removal be valued early in this draft? Well, it depends on the removal. I value great removal quite highly, but this is not great removal. Uh, this is great removal, and I valued it pretty darn highly. Yeah, I think it's Vulture, Spider, and uh, uh, I'm going to go with Vulture. Paid off, because now we get to go into the Thief. Uh, Thought Distortion is not really playable. Blade Brand, maybe we'll wheel. Uh, Portal, I feel like I want to make this happen at some point in this format, maybe multiple times. Maybe this could actually be good if there's some ETB stuff you're recurring. But uh, we're going to play it pretty straight here and just take the Thief. And Soul Salvage feels great as well. A little over, a little bit over the Befuddle. Yeah. Haven't seen much blue to support the Cavalier. Uh, we could think of ourselves right now as just mono black. Um, sometimes you don't get to play your awesome first pick Mythic. So let's be open to... Uh, moving away from that and just continue to take the best card we see. I think Scuttlemutt keeps us open in that regard here. And uh, we do have a seven drop we're trying to get to, so colorless fixing and ramp is dece. 
And if we do play blue, uh, even uh, even a, even a blue black two color deck could use a scuttle mutt when you're trying to catch cast a cavalier. God's willing, maybe the best card here. But here's a blade brand. Um, we tried Gruesome Scourger, and it was solid in sealed. I don't know about how good this is in draft. I'm pretty wary to run three threes for five. Uh, it feels like you're trying to win the game when you cast this. Um, yeah, Reduced to Ashes is a reasonable pick here as well. Again, we are not cavaliered for sure, and we do have the Mutt, and we could pick up um, Evolving Wilds. Um, I do like uh, Blade Brand with Thief a lot because everybody's going to block the Thief thinking that they're just going to eat it. Beetle, uh, I don't prioritize it here. Uh, this is the question, like, are you bringing this in against green decks? Probably just because it's like eternal blocking of green creatures on the ground, but I don't think we need to prioritize it. I would only run this out of the board against a green deck attempting to get trample-free beasties through on the ground. But that's the other thing. Trample just makes even the pro-green part kind of like whatever. Uh, anticipate. Sorry, let's finish this pack. It's one of these. It's one of these. But I really do like Blade Brand with Thief. And I know we're going to do that. I'm taking the Blade Brand. It's maybe maybe the weakest of those three options, but I know we're black now. We're going to totally play black, so... Uh, this is an interesting gift. I like gift on Thief as well. Uh, but we do have uh, Blood Burglar. This isn't really playable, I don't think. Um, yeah, Cutthroat also decent with Thief. But we might just want the Blood Burglar for a two. We don't have any twos yet. Let's take the Burglar. Is the Cutthroat playable if the Burglar wasn't there? Uh, I haven't seen the Cutthroat be any better or worse than it was in its original home in the Ixalan set. So I can't remember. I think it was the first one. And in there it was... Um, it sometimes did something, but was often a hill giant. Yeah, this is a late brawler. Uh, I have a I have a second draft going. I have a draft in that I'm in the middle of on the paid account that we could turn to today if uh, if if we bombed out of this one or something. But I think we still take it. It's that or the bow. Well, we can take abomination too. But yeah, if red is open. Yeah, Feral's not great. I, I I have a soft spot for Feral because I won a lot of uh, won a lot of Dominaria drafts with this guy on my battlefield. So it's not it's not unplayable in that format, but I don't think this is the right format for it per se. Um. Yeah, let's take Bow for the board. This is this is great. This is a great card for the elemental deck. I mean, it's a three four on its own. I mean, we can take take it for that. Like it's a three four attacker for th four. But it's really at best in the other in the elemental colors. Um, but bow for the board is good too. It's common though. We'll, we only want we'll take this. We could end up red. Let's let's uh, be open to that possibility. And we got another cutthroat. The pattern matcher came back, and the aeronaut is here. If we do end up kind of aggro black red, could do worse. No other fours, so we could take a second four and. Oh, we have an elemental. Which one's an elemental? Oh, this this one? I'm assuming that if we are... Uh, we're black, so if we're black-red, we're not playing the, the cav. Yeah, matcher has upside, right? Let's take this and, and try and uh, match a few thieves, shall we? I'm in. Uh, we can take Vault Progress, but... We'll take a treason just in case. Uh, we could end up red black. Sack attack. Bots sure seem to suggest that red black is what's open. I mean, we haven't found another pickable blue card this whole draft. I think we should just do this. Hmm. 
I'm not. I'll st actually still like we we could still end up playing that. So I am going to take befuddle, and we'll keep an eye on things. I'm just saying, this is no guarantee, and I, uh, we can't expect to get any blue in pack three. So if we get the blue hookup in pack two, we can take it. We just have to understand that we are going for heavy, heavy black in pack three. Woulda, shoulda, coulda, fiddles. Uh, some gem progress with the temple, or what? We have agonizing siphon. Or uh, reclamation, we try to splash that. Uh, Chandra, if we're red, is just fine. Although, let's not, don't confuse yourself here. <laughs> like, this is our, you know, kind of... Yeah, we can even take Reclamation and look to, to go green. Yeah, we can take gems. Um, I'm willing to uh, issue gem greed early on here as we explore what's actually good. Um, You'd take Siphon over Reclamation even if we were solid green-black? I don't agree with that. I think... I think... This has been... Uh, this is just a John Lauk special, right? I, I, I mentioned that when we played it before. It's just like... It's, it is truly the five-mana do-nothing enchantment that takes significant work before it even becomes a five-mana divination. But man, once you get past the five-mana divination, it just... Suddenly you've drawn eight nine cards and can't lose you know so it, it it takes a while to rev up but then once you get the the steam engine rolling you just feels like you can't lose uh yeah i'm gonna take siphon because we know it goes in our deck sorry everybody else here's another siphon here's uh fen lurker though for our let's just go mono black and wheel pattern matcher Another Reclamation. But well, here's an Outrage. We'll wheel this bow, probably. Outrage or Reclamation time. Or uh, Master Splice is very good as well, but we're nowhere... I mean, the thing is, like, this... We're barely red, right? We could take Outrage, but we could take Master Splicer and be black-white at this point. <laughs> Yeah, three pattern matchers to pattern match for the pattern matcher. I am in for that. That that would be a fun clip. I don't know. Like the best card here is still it's probably outrage. It might be master splicer though. I'm gonna take the outrage just because I think it's the best card here. What what can, what I don't like is that it's red red and we're just so black in where we're ending up here. Ooh, here's a frost links that I like a lot more than a reduced to ashes. Um, I get it, fiddles, but actually I like I like frost links and cavalier as my two my handful. Ugh, the blue is just so oppressive here, isn't it? Though, man. How do we ever play Cavaliers? I just don't want to give up on it. Yeah. Phil says we got to settle into something. Well, we we're, we will. We don't, like, I'm not worried. We have such great playables in black. Like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, hopefully ten, Eleven, like we already have eleven playables. Pack two, pick four. Like I'm just not worried about settling into a color. I'm worried about uh, settling into the right color. So I'm gonna take the links and see if we can't figure this out. Of course, that does not help. Uh, we look back more towards uh, red here. Spitfire is solid. Infuriate is weird but solid i don't know how i feel this nick look at this card what are they doing it's so weird to see 
eh, let's knock a point of toughness off and call it a giant-esque growth. It's weird. Like a mostly giant growth in red? I just... Hmm. Maybe, maybe it's not weird and I'm weird. Uh, the record, no, this is... Uh, that's a legacy from yesterday's successful run. Definitely not four and one halfway through the draft. Prana Dees. Yeah, yeah. All right, maybe I'll try and force it. Sprite versus Cutthroat. Well, let's take a Cutthroat here. If I passed, I know I passed one other one. I've passed two other Cutthroats, Nick. Uh, I don't love to play this, but is that better than just a barony vamp or a prismite? I'm going to take the vial. It's not great, but this is, you know, and this is where I want to, We talked about bone splinters earlier. This is where I want to take a bone splinters right here. Well, this is somewhat encouraging, like our pack, and there wasn't a ton of blue, right? Like the blue basically all came back. So, you know, we'll take a Sprite here. Maybe uh, it was just light on blue. I don't know why that blade is still there, right? That seems crazy, but there it is. We're gonna take a Sideboard bow over the denizen there. I are, I basically never play duress in limited, so I just never take it. Like, um, if we're never playing that, maybe we can uh, take the vault progress. I'll take the abomination in case. You never know. We might decide there's a time for it. Uh, and like that. All right, pack three, hook us up. Our yesterday pack one, pick one comes back at a time where we can't really follow up on that. Uh, but there's not much else here. Oh, no, a thief. We'll take a thief. This would be gems, but I'm, I I want a second. Like we have uh, we have pattern matcher. So I want to get I want to pick up some thieves. Zach, you seem really excited about the denizen. What? Why are you so excited? Vulture. Yeah, it's fine. And it does represent a second copy of Vulture, second copy of a thief. Now we get a second copy of a lynx or a cutthroat. Nick. Nick with the uh, four cutthroat deck. I like second links here, and maybe we get lucky and wheel the cutthroat. I like the siphon too, but we have two pattern matchers, so I really do like uh, the double ups. I didn't. Do we end up with one of these? No. We might. Do we want another vial? If we say no to this and this. So this is uh, 23 cards right now. So that's nice. That at least, at the very least, we have this, you know. So we're just kind of upgrading from this. Um, that. Maybe we'll put a... Th Cutthroat in. The gate for the board is interesting as well to me, but I think we'll take uh, Cutthroat. 
It does uh, tandem well with the thief. Well, 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 it's the gyre. I was uh, debating the quality of this card with Zvazda earlier, who looks at this more with a tempo aggro eye. I tend to see blue through more of a control lens and don't like this as much, but maybe this is the time for it. Uh, we have a soul salvage already. Do we want two? We might run two. But I kind of want to take the gyre. Well, I don't know. It's not... Trouble's the only one to cast it if it's winning the game. Like, if we had had this yesterday, I would have been really pleased. There were some times that uh, that it would have really won us some, some games. But I don't know if we're that kind of deck here. We're just kind of just trying to get this Cavalier and win with it. I've not been too impressed with the Diamond Knight. It's a pretty miserable top deck, and if you play it on three, like, it's good by turn five or six if you just rattle off nothing but spells of that color. And Befuddle is fine, but we have one of those. I don't know how many we want. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the gyre and we'll decide if we're gonna play it. Mm. I don't know if we're playing it, Zach, but I took it. I could also see some matchups where it's what we want to do or some some timing. Here's another bow, but maybe we just want a boring old 3-2 for three. Curve filler. We got a bow. We're not going to play two. I'm never playing two bows, like literally never. So let's not worry about a second bow. Nice uh, land to help smooth things out. Or we can take a Vengeful War Chief. Well, sea Serpent actually might be uh, what we need for this deck. Uh, right now, our win condition is basically Cavalier of Gales and raw card advantage, basically. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the land does help with the Cavalier, but I do I would take a Serpent. I really want to actually really want a Serpent. <sighs> but you make a good point. I do want to cast Cavalier even more than... Uh... Yeah, War Chief is fine. Like, but it's just big, right? It's like, well, it starts out, it starts out not fine. Then, uh, then you lose some life and immediately becomes fine and then starts to get better than fine. But I don't think it's a priority. Yeah, I would definitely take Serpent over Chief because this is a clock. This is like, okay, we're stalled out, but I have seven mana. So how many times can you take four? So I'm going to take uh, the, I am going to take the fixing though because of the triple cost here. Hey, look, not punished. Another opportunity for a diamond knight that I'm not too psyched about and would rather, I think, have one of these two. It's convolute, really playable. It, it is a pretty much a hard counter at four. It's awfully hard to pay for. Yeah, Convolute's pretty is is playable. I don't think it's great, but it's playable. We'll take a uh, Raptor here. Second Cutthroat goes with the uh, Pattern Matchers, so we'll take that. We're <sighs> befuddle. Are we playing two befuddles, or should we just take Vault Progress? I don't think a second Befuddle is making the deck. I'm going to take Vault Progress. You are correct. 
but it was a fine reason to take that card there in terms of uh don't think not thinking cutthroat is the card you want to reveal with the watcher probably might not even play two cutthroats but felt like that was the correct pick turn six hammer equip i hope you then uh, got a scoop there piece or because the, the the real punchline of that story is i did it i equipped the hammer on turn six today they unsummoned my creature but i, I did it you know <laughs> Okay, six cuts, and here's where we're starting. 21 creatures, eight non-creatures. I want this as a second thing there. We probably don't want the raptor to start. We don't need to play two cutthroats, but one seems fine. Maybe cut the barony vamp as being pretty whatever. Mo Piranhas is much better in a Skies style deck, but I have found it tangles on the ground uh, in a worthwhile way. Do we run the Vile or is... Yeah, we got no Murders. We got a Bone Splinters, a Siphon, and, a, and these Blade Brands that we're trying to turn into removal. You want, I'm not going to take out the Scuttle Mutt because, again, it helps with the trickiness of Cavalier of Gales. You want to take out one Blade Brand? I don't like them both, but all right, I'll take out one. Pattern Matcher currently has three things to hope to match patterns to. Maybe that's maybe just one is fine. You don't you definitely don't want to pile up on these when you have no uh, no pattern to match. You don't want the piranhas. Like I said, they, uh, they've done work even. I think they'll be OK even in, in this type of situation. Just a three three for two puts a lot of uh, pre does a lot of work against green. Really, that's what this like. Being able to throw a 3-3 in front of uh, your opponent's aggressive, you know, they play green and they ramp into a 4-3 elemental on three or whatever. That's where I really like having uh, the piranhas. It's probably, I think I want to cut a befuddle or a convolute. That's, I think, my final choice here. And you want second blade brand over vile. That's interesting. Yeah, befuddle always does something. Convolute can get to the point where it does nothing. What if we do. I think I'm going to try this. I think I do like that. And we can bring in the vial if we feel like it's going to be a good, important card, important removal spell in the matchup. Yeah, befuddle combos with thief. It befuddle combos with blade brand. If you have five mana and you get to go befuddle blade brand in a situation they think is combat, they're going to win. You know. I'm going to start here. Let's stop uh, ringing hands. Um, we'll call this. We're we going to call this. Um, I think I already named a deck mixed doubles, but that's what this looks like to me again. Uh, we're going to call this. Um, Uh, whatever. That's so boring. And, I, and also, I'm trying to come up with a uh, non-revealing one that won't reveal what colors it is anyway. So how about... Um, uh, 
Uh, patterns. Long time to come up with a terrible name, but let's play magic. Oh, I want to check land too. I guess that's right, like an even split because uh, of the Cavalier. Yeah, and we got, yeah, we got early stuff in blue. Yep, even split. All right, jump to the battlefield view and see what we can do here. Is this part two? I don't think this is two five. I mean, Cavalier is not. I think this is a fine deck, but it's not stupid. I think two is fair. I'm mulligan that, of course, but that looks much better. Gotta drop the golem. London Mulligan's great, though. I feel like we have a nice playable hand here, and it's only because exactly the golem is missing, right? If, he, if you give me a golem and take out any one of these other cards, the hand might become another mulligan. Although, if you, as long as you had the swamp and island, you're not going to throw it back. But yeah, London Mulligan just feels bad to bottom golem, but it feels great to keep a hand that's totally playable. Uh, we'll start on Sprite, since they're not showing anything we need to block yet. Oh yeah, Thief into Lynx is... Uh, this is a combo I've been looking forward to... ...having 3-4 uh, since I saw the two cards. Yeah, part one in effect. Don't kill my thief. He hasn't stolen anything yet. You can't kill him. What about the minority report? Uh, yeah, we're not gonna cast anything no matter what we draw, right? We have a, we have, well, I guess we have a bone splinters that we could potentially. Oh, we can activate the sprite. That's what we'll do, sure. Yeah, good call on the tap land too, hard event, but when I realized we could uh, get power out of the sprite, that seemed correct. Uh, this is where, yeah, like imagine Blade Brand right now. Oh, if we had Blade Brand, and we might, like we can attack and befuddle, and maybe we'll draw into the Blade Brand. Uh, but Oppo is compelled to block the thief. They like, they have to block the thief. One time dealer, blade brand on top. Come on. Oh. Yes, we still might get it off the befuddle. One more shot. All right, this time, dealer, this time. Come on, come on. Oh. It's gonna be so good. We can cutthroat first. Why would we wanna cutthroat first?
No worries, Norbert. We all have a serious case of the reeds at the beginning of a format. Not sure we want to use this splinters yet. I'm going to play the moat piranhas and pass. See what comes next. It'll come in handy, but not right now. We're going to play it, play it slower here. See if we can untap this thief. Get some more tools. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, I just like having piranhas to threaten to trade with something like a Thicket Crasher at a much lower mana cost. And now I think we have a good candidate for a Bone Splinters, wouldn't you say? Maybe it's just the Metropolis Sprite, given that it's never going to attack through the Netcaster Spider. Uh, never say never, Ryan. Let's go... Frost Links tapping down what? I think we're going to lose the Thief here almost no matter what. But if we go... Yeah, I think we just tap, keep tapping the Spider and then kill the Vorst Claw. He's the Vorst. We're pretty far off from this, uh, you know, tapping the spider, kind of like getting us there or whatever, but it's it's fine. Blanket moop. You want to tap the claw and kill the spider so that we get continued damage with the uh, sprite in? Is that what you're thinking? I'm going to go ahead and send the thief, draw one final card there. I could have killed the Vorst Claw before we head in with the thief, but the thief was going to get blocked and die to the Crasher or the Claw, so it didn't really matter to me. And if we get the Blade Brand, we get the Blade Brand either way. So let's send in those two. No Blade Brand for us. We're really kind of flooding out, but... Drawing cards as we flood out, so that's that's pretty decent. All right, what's our least important creature? One of these uh, lynxes. Is there any need to cycle the thief right now? Maybe I was just being uh, card greedy and really wanting to go find cards, but that tends to be what I want to do with that. Maybe uh, maybe my instincts are incorrect there. We can we can talk about that. Yeah, let's do... Good point. We have a Soul Salvage. And a Soul Salvage is another reason to be a little bit cavalier with your thieves. But uh, let's see. If we're waiting, what would be the point of waiting? We're waiting so that we can get it through successfully. Like, I just... Or we're waiting until we have a Blade Brand so that it can take something down with it. Like, I, I don't know about waiting. I think I'd rather just go and uh, at, look for stuff now, you know? Mutt, not really good here. We do get an attack with a sprite in, but that's about it. Anybody else? Uh, I'm curious about that thought. Is anybody else not attacking with a thief in there, knowing that it's you're just getting your last card from it? Or are you going to hang on and try to get something more out of it? Here, I'm just happy to try and trade a piranha off for the crasher. And we'll see if that happens. Vulture. Well, don't do it that way.
Hopefully we don't get rid of our uh, oh, blade brand and a bunch of land. Blade brand's a little late there. Uh, we don't have much card draw. I'm trying to decide if I'm playing this land or sandbagging it. We'll sandbag it for now, I think. Could have double blocked to prevent trample. It would have been one point, and then it gives Oppo a choice on what to kill. So I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to give them a choice. I'm cool with trying to trade. They didn't show anything last time here, so I kind of feel like this is an honest offer. Um, kind of want to keep the mutt in case we do draw our cavalier, but we could throw some combination of these two, like this, the sprite, again, not doing much against this netcaster spider. I think I'm going to go... The cutthroat has the chance to get bigger. Hmm. Yeah, I want to kill the rhino. I'm just trying to figure out with what. Like, if it's this, uh, or whether we throw the vulture in the way. Yeah, let's do it this way. Yeah, that's a good point. I could uh, If I swap these two, I save a point of damage. So that's one point of life punted away. We'll see if that matters. Oh, no, this had trample too. So they would have both trampled. It didn't matter, actually. Nope. Oh, yeah, that was a point punted. I thought I needed four. Sorry. Hey, but look, keeping the mutt was sensible. Yes, and then I like, uh, we can Yaruk, and then next turn we draw a creature and then Vulture away the land on top. Yaruk while we can get something, even if it's to land. Oh, Pattern Matcher, nice. They were waiting to get value there, and... Uh, we got him. Fenlurker being able to pump is going to be good here for... Fun. Oh, yeah, they just gave that up. Pay no attention to the punts. Somewhere Dionysus is feeling a disturbance in the force. Second Cutthroat in. You like the second Cutthroat just because it's three power for the uh, three toughness four drops they have on the ground? Yeah, we get to bring in the Grasp. Well, if you like the three three is a strong body, I almost prefer a second Pattern Matcher to a second Cutthroat. Cutthroat's okay with Thief, yeah. Do this, this. Mm. 
One here, one here. Here we're playing around Befuddle now anyway. What? Oh, Abomination. Mm, no. All right, running low on time. You like the vanilla vamp? I don't like the vanilla vamp in the context of what else we're doing at three. Um, almost rather take out something like a blood burglar and run this. Cutthroat does not seem great, says Hard Event. Part of the theory was uh, with two Cutthroat, we have two Pattern Matcher that we can go get. Uh, and that with uh, Thief, Cutthroat is a good follow up to the Thief audaciously meeting his doom. Oof. Oppa going to five. Sorry, buddy. Got the cutthroat thief combo set up here. Although the combo I think is more important than we have set up is both uh, thief links and pattern matcher thief links. <laughs> No two. We did cut a two drop to add like a fathom three fathom fleet. So in a different world, we are we are attacking with a two drop two two life link right now, and uh, have one cutthroat. But hopefully, thief resolves. They might uh, convolute this. But all right, we made it. So I like that here we just get to do it, we kind of do it in sequence. Start here with this. I do like, you get, I'm not gonna do this every time, but. All right, everyone, chill. And I don't know, maybe drawing a card with the thief is uh, worth worth a, worth a rat burglar. Nah, we're, we're using a uh, rat burglar for the other dude. Although I, I denied you guys a, Here, this was for failing to do this for the uh, new rat burglar. Some say I never heard of you, a rat burglar. Two to the top for Oppo. We have a second Lynx. And by God, I'm gonna use it. Everyone, chill. Oh no! All our patterns are being pre matched. Ah, bold. All right, Cutthroat's gonna do some work now, I think. Ooh, and Bone Splinters? Oh, maybe we just Bone Splinters. Yeah, let's do that. Bone, bone Splinters, uh, Elemental with a Frost Links. Get in there. Didn't find another land. We'll save the blade brand, but yeah, it was uh, the the elemental definitely punishes you. And honestly, I forgot that uh, that the elemental was gonna uh, use up our mana like that.
Hey, Oni, how you been? Ooh, they're racing. Maybe that makes sense. You got some pretty big dudes. We're at six now. Um, oh, that's nice. So... We gain a life. We destroy a uh, crasher. Got to send in the thief here. I think we send in the thief and we... Blade brand it, maybe? Let's see. Wait, we're definitely sending in the thief. Actually, we'll probably uh, cut through it. Thanks for the host, Jeff. I'm going to cut through it because then we have... Uh, we kill this, kill this, and have a blocker for this, and then we feel pretty stable. We could Vulture, Pattern Match for Vulture. Could uh, Lynx attack, and if they don't, if they, they're not going to block if we get Lynx attack, so that's not really good. I mean, we can attack, they're just not going to block, though. I don't, like, uh, all your, like, attack, cutthroat. I mean, they're not going to block. Why would they block? We can, maybe some players are not thinking it through and they, they might block. And if we're not going to block, then that's fine. I just want to figure out the turn before I decide that. We probably have to play the cutthroat no matter what. Although, no, we can do pattern matcher. Okay, I'm going to attack. And then we'll uh, either vulture pattern matcher or vulture or like scuttle mutt or thief cutthroat. We'll see. Mainly, I want uh, three power down to threaten this crasher. Wow. All right, y'all are right, I'm wrong. I can't, I'm very surprised that Mappa would be falling for that. We could just Blade Brand as well. Um, no, again though, we'll just uh, Cutthroat Thief. That's fine. And then Blade Brand can be used with the Thief. Cutthroat back, and again, the thief blade brand combo is just so good. It just looks so innocuous or so obvious as to why I'm doing this attack. Oh, and a soul salvage too. So good. At this point, if the Vulture wants to mill the other Vulture and we don't have great value for the Pattern Matcher, no problem. I can live with that result. But let's go... Uh, actually, Vulture, and then we have Soul Salvage or Scuttlemutt. That seems nice. Was that the other Vulture? Yep, you called it. And I called it too. I'm perfectly happy with that. Uh, let's go... Let's go Scuttlemutt. He can attack and stuff. Well, there's only 14 cards left in the library, and we milled four of them. It's not like it was... Uh, the odds were wildly against. Hey, we didn't even get to make him scoop with our Cavalier. We're supposed to make him scoop with the Cavalier. We'll take the W. We'll 
Right on, good start. Uh, Stephen Hacking wanted to maybe attack with a 3-3. Yeah, maybe we could have. We were at a low life, though. I don't know. I just felt like that was a guaranteed block, and then we were going to be in great shape. Yeah, Deck, uh, Deck did some good, good work there. I'm going to uh, go grab a beverage before we jump into the next game, but it won't be long. Give me just uh, 30 seconds here to go get a, a soda. All right, looks good. <clears throat> Fish in the way. Gonna use removal on the fish? Please do. Looks like classic teamer elementals here. Now that's a good place for a shock. Um, <clears throat> in the draft I have going on the paid account, I've got two Woodland Champions and two of the uh, Elemental that makes two other Elementals. Um, that's been a pretty good combo. Go Fish is a good name for the deck. I like that, James. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to thief for or salvage for just the thief. But if Oppo does something to make a bunch of tokens and makes the Woodland Champion big or whatever, we'll go ahead and, and Blade Brand for some value there. Blade Brand the fish on blocking if needed.
Disappointing to not find more action, but I'm not going to cycle the blade brand. We're not under that much pressure and we have a sea serpent next turn. <clears throat> uh, hopefully I'm not letting us fall too far behind here. It's pretty brutal to not do anything of significance uh, for a couple turns like this. But we can recover. Lotus Field seems great in a three-color deck. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. I had this combo uh, before. Actually, I still have this combo. I'm 2-0 in that deck. <clears throat> but now, yeah, this is rough. A lot of... Uh, a lot of damage coming our way here. Hello. I would like to block with you. Yes, thank you. Stabilize from seven. Just really awkward draw this game. But the answer is the answer is still maybe. Uh, we're gonna take one, two, at least. But they may be down to only two if they don't have anything for our creatures. But these two are pretty awkward. Right now, we can't beat a Drake and a Smuggler. Hmm. Okay. Well, we don't have many choices here. Trying to figure out if it's worth even digging and showing anything more. Um, we can't do anything about one in the air. They're going to get two. I guess we can buy a turn. And if we... Uh, yeah. But then what? Then then what are we drawing to not lose? That I don't feel like we have outs with that turn is the problem. I guess Frost Lynxes might help. All right, we'll, we'll, we won't give up yet. I, I think the uh, loss of the information given up is okay, but now I gotta figure out even how. Let's see, we get Thief back. Yeah, but then we don't even, we still can't do anything. We can't do any, nah, never mind. I'm, I'm scooping, we can't win here. There was uh, too much that needed to happen and too much mana to do it with. Well, Oppo's deck didn't impress me all that much. I was pretty unimpressed with ours even more, though. We can bring in... Um, we see enough green? Yeah, probably saw enough green. It's a little narrow, but probably worth it. And we could lower the curve. Cut a serpent for even a vampire or another pattern matcher. Raptor in the air. Yeah, 
Yeah, I suppose I should have cycled a blade brand. I was a little too focused on the uh, soul salvage. Uh, what else did I cut? Why is it down to... Have we just not added it yet? Oh yeah, we, we cut the serpent but haven't added anything. And I cut the... That and added that. Um, is this a heart piercer bow deck? Hmm. Mm, Befuddle I took out to put in the uh, grasp, actually. You want Befuddle back in? I don't know. I think I'd rather just have a creature here. Let's look at the bow possibility. Yeah, they showed a few creatures. Yeah, maybe the bow comes in if we make game three. I'll keep an eye on that here. Scuttlemutt's in for good reasons. But I get that it's weak. Maybe uh, just could even, I don't know, put an 18th land or something. We'll keep this, though. Where's our Soren now? The bow also feels a little slow. It's like in your fantasy, you're like, ah, we'll pick off, pick off all of those one toughness creatures with our attacks. And it's like, yeah, you cast the bow, you equip, you pick off one of them, and then you, you're, you're dead, right? I don't know if the bow is fast enough. That was my feeling. The Scuttlemutt's a little better than an 18th land given what we're trying to do there. Shock the burglar. Go for it. We'll follow with the vamp. Yeah, Cerulean Drake is one of those cards I would like to not lose to. If you're going to run it main, I think you should be taking it out when you see that they don't have red, but I don't know. Maybe that's just me. All right, flooding out a bit now, though. We need to draw some action. We've drawn a couple lands so far and want to see something else. Holding steady, Siratami. Nice. I guess that technically qualifies as action. We'll throw in the backwater tapped. Drop a piranhas and... I guess we'll send in. I guess we're racing. Got our piranha anyway. I don't feel the need to splinter anything here. So what are your uh, early perceptions? Top 500 mythic player, Sir Temi? What do you... Uh, where do you where do you want to be if you had if you could tell the bots what colors to give you what would you ask for? I see you've gone blue white, blue red. So you're into the blue at least. Rabbit Vite on the vampire, not a bad fate for that. More land for us, though, unfortunately. Maybe they want to trade off for the vampire now? I don't know. We'll find out.
Yeah, all the vampires and wolves fighting each other. Yeah, I'm looking forward to my first, uh, what's it's called? The, uh, Reef, Reef whatever, the three drop. The blue green three drop uncommon. I have not played with that yet. I think I've played against it once and managed to, oh, that was constructed. I played against it a little bit in constructed, but I've never faced it or played with it in limited. Risen Reef, thank you. Wow, we are just uh, flooding our way to 1-1 one, one here against a deck I feel like we should be able to overcome. We still have time though. And I still don't feel like uh, splintering any bones, especially with this stuff. And you can see why I don't prioritize bone splinters unless we're really doing it with tokens. Bone splinters with all these elementals seems great. Bone splinters with our lack of tokens is actually kind of rough. Like I've never been really happy when I've cast the bone splinters. We've always had to give up something. Well, great. That's kind of funny when they could just uh, smuggle one smuggler and get the same effect and have more stuff untapped, but whatevs. Now I think we have to... Uh... Bone Splinters, one of the smugglers. And play the Cutthroat. Ah, this is frustrating. I, I feel like our cards outclass everything going on here, but uh, <laughs> you have to draw them. So it goes. Magic is magic. Uh, now I'm thinking about whether we attack with the vampire or just chuck it at a smuggler right now. Or even potentially the drake is... I guess we just have to... Uh, I think we have to. And they're gonna block if we don't, if we do it that way. So I'm gonna target one of these, ditch the vamp, and play a low value cutthroat on defense. I'm talking trash about Oppo's deck and I'm playing cutthroats, which I don't love, you know, but they have a purpose. They're at least a combo with the thieves. But it looks like we've held now we've held, held the attack down to three a turn, which maybe gives us time to get out of this somehow. They're just coming hard. At the paint. Um, Drake, if they've got more, like maybe they're just doing this, and uh, this is going to be like six damage. But I think, what do we have in the air to stop the Drake? I mean, the thing is, we have to... The Smuggler just stops the Drake anyway, right? So I think we just have to take out the, the Smuggler. Yeah, Vulture stops the Drake. Good call. And we got two of those. So yeah, let's take out the Smuggler. Gives us some life to work with, and uh, hopefully we can <clears throat> find a Vulture. I'd even take the Metropolis Sprite to try and trade with the Drake there. Cav would be nice. Come on, Magic God. Just at least let us have a game three, all right? Get us a game three. We are removal light, though, right? We're trying to make our blade brands into our removal, and so... Uh, the Smuggler's fine. I, you know, again, was kind of being a little trash talky about Oppo's deck, and there's some components and and that I don't like, but uh, but the Smuggler is interesting because it does put some pressure on the control deck with that that's low on removal. Because then it's like, yeah, you think you've stabilized the board, but now they can just plink away for a few turns, and you're in trouble. Uh, here, though, at least we have two things to get back. Um, so let's do that. <laughs>
And Blood Burglar, if we can turn it sideways, gets us some life back. That's a big boy. Now we need some action big time. How about a golem? Well, we knew they weren't heavy green when we brought this in, but if they uh, play a green creature, we're going to be happy to have this. It's just a bit of a bummer right now and might be too late. Like, we're now uh, on a two-turn clock, so... Uh, I think we say no attacks here, but next turn we may need to attack with a Blood Burglar to get some life gain in. Yeah, Scuttler would allow me to change the color of the air elemental to a noxious grasp color, but we don't have time for that. We're now, we now need to top deck. So I think we're gonna lose this one. Kind of a bummer, but again, magic is magic. We're gonna move on with our lives and try to pick up wins elsewhere. I do not recommend Oppo's strategy here of uh, three color giant growth elementals, but sometimes it works. Did not have the tools to punish that time. All right, let's revisit just briefly here. See if there's anything we want to reconfigure based on what we've seen so far. I really am not digging the splinters. It's been a quite a liability to try and cast this. I almost want to just put in a <clears throat> uh, vial if we want some extra removal. Am I crazy? Like, this has been a, an uncomfortable draw every single time. Like, what are we sacrificing that we're happy about? You think uh, two, three for three is valuable in this format, Danny? Because, I mean, that's what you're saying, right? That that you would play a vanilla two, three here in this format? Maybe. Bow for their flying one, one. And, well, we're not sideboarding, but this is uh, reconfiguring our main deck, making sure that we don't want to um, rethink how we're going into game one. And I, I'm really not digging the bone splinters. This is kind of weak, but generically okay. You really hate to have to resort to this in black. I mean, where are our murders? No murders. I'm going to try siding it out for the dragon fire for right now and see how that plays. Artemis, uh, yeah, well, I've debated on, on that, um, well, is, uh, Sir Temi, are you still here? Do you, uh, do you run, uh, would you run the gyre in this deck or you're off the gyre? Curious what you think of, of this. I've not been playing it unless I was feeling pretty tempo blue and I'm not feeling the tempo blue here, despite the thieves, like, uh, Clearing, clearing the path for thieves, obviously, has some value. What, uh, what might cause you, to, like, like, what if, what, what do we have that if we didn't have would make you want to run it? Like... We actually don't have a ton of removal. I cut. I mean, I just cut the bone splinters, which leaves us with um, uh, some quasi removal. Like we have two blade brands and a befuddle that can get tricky, and we have a vial. And we have a siphon, 
but really no other removal. Oh, Meteor Golem. Why is it worse than Vile? The problem with Gyre is that it has times when you can't really cast it because it doesn't do anything. Um, if you, on a crowded board, you may just be doing literal nothing, like sending them back, and then the next turn they put them back down. What have you done, right? Uh, similarly, even if you're like, ah, oh, we're under pressure, we're, we're the blue deck, and we need to buy some time. So, okay, you spend six and relieve the pressure for a turn, but then again, it comes back right away. Yeah, you can use it on your own creatures, although we don't have uh, really, I guess we have uh, pattern matcher ETBs, which could be good. <clears throat> You like the knight. That surprises me. I've not found the knight to be good. Let's cut the befuddle. I'll work with uh, Sir Temi on this one. Yeah, we're talking about uh, Pattern Matcher can be pretty good. What do you think of the Cutthroat? There was Cutthroat Thief interactions we liked. Let's... Scuttlemutt is uh, getting us to Meteor Golem faster and helping us cast our oppressively costed Mythic. Um... All right, well, let's try this. Portion control is for blockers. Uh, I was thinking about the links, but maybe with the soul salvage, just vulture and see what uh, goodies we can start loading up on there. Two cards, reasonable playables. No, 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 that's our deck. Well, let's tie down the thief. All right, everyone, chill. How do we beat this? Hoppo's deck looks better than ours. We're gonna do some blocking coming up, I guess. Let's see, if we attack with the Fen Lurker, that doesn't get big enough. So we are really just uh, piranha-ing and salvaging or cutthroating. We could send in the Fen Lurker and then cut throats. Kind of like that. I want you to stop yelling at me, Dionysus.
this gets us something. And I actually like that this guy's dead now. We can go back and get that with the soul salvage and take out the last card in their hand, potentially. Well, it's not going to be the last card because they're going to get audacious. Well, here's a chance for the knight to prove it should be in our deck. Doke. So, five mana. I think we get Lynx and something else, and then Lynx the Thief. Ah, we have Piranhas. Maybe we don't need to Lynx the Thief. Oh, good point. My math is bad. Uh, so let's go Piranha. Go, sorry, we can do Soul Salvage, uh, get, the, get the discard spell. Let's go Piranha, Soul Salvage. And what do we want? I think they see it coming, but we want the Lurker anyway. And then a Vulture for flying overhead, I think. Vulture might look bad later. Uh, if they get some defense in the air, but I, I wanted to give it a try here. If we I want to blade brand the war chief, but since they know about both of these cards, if we don't cast them, it's pretty obvious. However, our life total is pretty high, so let's go ahead and cast both, and then uh, we'll uh, surprise them with the blade brand after. We can take a hit from the chief. Pattern Matcher, Cutthroat, and a couple of lands there. Hmm. We can siphon the Sprite and have the Blade Brand. Might want Siphon for a better target. They can't realistically block it right now. Let's attack with both first. Because they can't really block. I don't even like a sideboard beetle, much less a main deck one, so... <sighs> yeah, I'm not going to get cute. I'm just going to take out the uh, sprite now. No murder, no murder, no murder. Well, a little bit flooded, but at least we have uh, the creature for that. Uh, if we crack with both, they get to crack back for two points of gain, but we have nothing to do but pump now, so we're going to uh, offer this race up. Road to Rome asks, anyone know when Watsi will give players the ability to disable gratuitous visuals? I would love to play a match without dumb stuff flashing and moving all over the place. Um, 
I don't think they have any immediate plans to uh, help you out, dude. Sorry. Uh, we could trade off the Fen Lurker with the Pattern Matcher, but... Uh, we've got a decent clock in the air. Uh, we threaten to eat the Blood Burglar, and with a th another land, we actually have the uh, triple activation for a 4-4. Hmm. All right. Uh, are there vultures in the yard? So matching patterns doesn't do anything for us here. But I don't feel comfortable. Well, let's see. Also, if we wait, we have the threat of a 4 4. Uh, so here, this threat threatens a 4-4. If we play the Pattern Matcher, we uh, only threaten a 2-2 and a 3-3. Three, three. I'm going to threaten the 4-4, four, because four, I would try and trade with that Epicure if offered. And then we can follow the Pattern Matcher to continue blanking the Burglar. All right, well, they're going to do it that way. So I'm going to try and take out the Burglar here. Don't know if they have something to do in response here, but we have, it's like our only line, so we're gonna take it. All right, they've got a blade brand. Oh, I appreciate that they didn't make us pay three more, even though it doesn't actually impact things. And I appreciate that the burglar is indeed dead. All right, cool. We get to go Thief into Pattern Matcher and to get another Thief, and then we can even attack with the Vulture because we'll have enough going on on the ground to continue going at the air. Uh, we can go Matcher Thief on Epicure. Then one of them has to live. We drop the other Thief and it can block. I think we got to do that. They haven't shown a lot of tricks and stuff here, so um, I'm going to use Thieves more defensively here. Oh, we could keep the... Ooh. Never mind. Uh, instead, we suddenly lose out of nowhere because people play eight drops. Great. They only they don't necessarily have a lot of life payment, though. But they have enough to kill it, right? So then we're just dead. Definitely got to attack with the thief. Oh, my kingdom for a blade brand. Oh my god, that would have been beautiful. Oh. Yeah, we're just dead. We're going to make them uh, make them see it, I guess. We don't have a chump. Well, if they don't, if, they, if they're going to do that, we I guess we have a chump. I was just kind of. I just don't know why they didn't kill us. I guess is I thought like we were just Dobbs, so I don't know uh, why why we're not dead. Um, so we'll go to one. No, we 
can't attack with the thief, but I don't think chumping with the thief is correct. Like, for some reason, they're not using their life. So maybe we should need, maybe we need to keep the island back uh, to... Threat, you know, maybe they're afraid of something in hand. Yeah, we're gonna hold land and go in full control. If we can, uh, although Met Metropolis Sprite eliminates the need to run any bluffs. Yeah, that's why we're holding a spell. Yeah, okay, they're finally deciding to kill us. I mean, yeah, it's too bad. I guess maybe if I play the Mutt, they don't attack with the other card, though. So, I don't know. That was frustrating. It was pretty much... That was a good game until we got blown out by an 8-drop. And they remembered to use it. Let's bring in maybe a Convolute, given that. Uh, yeah, we can, uh, since they seem willing to make the blocks like that, perhaps uh, another cutthroat is, is appropriate. I don't love it, though. Thanks, Oni. I'm going to keep the vial because we want to kill those thieves. Um, what does that leave us cutting? No, I don't want... I, I want the Blade Brands. Well, I'm bringing in Convolute as a possible answer to the 8-8. Eight eight. Um, so I think I'm just going to cut one from here and call it good and figure out what that cut is. Yeah, I'm just going to actually go back to one. Have you noticed Limited feeling better since they introduced the London Mulligan? I've noticed Mulligan's feeling better, for sure. We mulliganed before, and I was saying we mulliganed into a perfectly playable hand that uh, was competitive. I don't even remember if we won the game, but the point is um, the London Mulligan gave us uh, a fight. We're trying it in the main. It's gone back and forth, Dionysus. Uh, I'm trying it in the main as a generic removal option. And in this case, I like it because Oppo is playing these three drop thieves that we would love to pick off. get to go, uh, if we can avoid drawing a Lynx, we can pattern match for a Lynx. One time dealer, no Lynx. Wow, good cards. Glad to dodge those. Better match patterns now. <clears throat> And uh, we have Soul Salvage, etc. We'll offer this Lynx. As I say, I don't think they'll take it anyway. They got a flyer. Uh, 
Oh wow, they gained uh, straight up four four life <laughs> off of that vulture mill. <clears throat> I don't think that's going to be the one you want, but we're going to take that out anyway. Unfortunately, we're going to do it right now. Because we didn't find an island for our Cavalier. But let's just siphon the Dungeon Geist and... Wow, this game is... Like, how... Did they go back up again? What, why did they get all that life? Where are they getting all this life from? Oh, the burglar, got it. And they're gonna get some more here. <laughs> um, I'm being unnecessarily aggressive. You're right, we'll stop attacking. Uh, let's go, hopefully get, now we, we really want that other island. It turns on Meteor Golem and the Cavalier. Death touch, lifely. I almost want to just attack in with both and fathom fleet it. Yeah, let's do that. Now I have a good reason to attack. Oh, perfect. Rather have the pattern matcher. I sent both because I wanted Oppo to see that I was offering trades and, and, and hopefully take one. Well, speaking of offering trades, uh, they probably they have maybe have a cutthroat of their own, but we're definitely blocking the burglar. We'll take uh, we'll accept a blade brand or a befuddle or whatever. <clears throat> or disfigure. Still traded for something is the important thing. And traded for something good. I feel good here. Uh, we got to dodge that 8 drop, if, assuming they make it to it. Right now, I kind of hope they have the 8 drop. Punish them for, for that. Uh, but here we go. We can go a couple ways about this. Uh, is there a target? Is there a look at your hand and make you discard? Because we could wait on this if we wanted to start here. Uh, but maybe we just start here. <clears throat> And play this if they muster something decent in response. So yeah, we'll start here and um, I'll attack with a pattern matcher. If they kill the cavalier, wait, what does, what does cavalier even do? When it dies, shuffle it into the scry two on death. I just couldn't remember what happened when it died. Um, <clears throat> yeah, let's. That's true. We can hide the golem. All right, I'm gonna attack. It's a little bit risky. If they kill the cavalier, we we take a decent crack back. But I'm gonna risk it. do we want? Let's put... Sure. I know they're three man away from the eight drop, but we don't... Uh, wow, okay, so... They're just challenging immediately. Feels like Blade Brand or Cutthroat, but I don't know if we can uh, afford to just take what amounts to six when we're at 13. And we'll end up with, we got a decent hand here. So even if they 
Yeah, I think we... I think we have to do it. We also, uh... We can at least still scry two and scry the land away. Oh, we completely lose it. Yeah, well, all right. Reading cards, you know. Uh, that's not bad, though, for recovering our position. Let's do this. I kind of want to go Lynx Vulture. Stay back on D. Don't do it. Oh, there goes the Golem again. We used our... All right, we still have uh, recover stuff from the yard spell or whatever, so say no attacks. Try to stabilize. Our audacious thief isn't quite going to get there here. We might just send it in anyway, um, but let's see, four, eight. We can't lynx and sea serpent, and the lynx doesn't actually do anything. I actually want to save the lynx maybe for, like, they're close to eight now. If they draw a land, we could see big bad. Um... Thief is just better on D, you think? Mm. To do what? Block the burglar? No, nah, I'm gonna I'm gonna send in the thief and the vulture. No, we'll keep the vulture back to trade with the sprite potentially, but I am gonna send the thief. And uh Plan A is now frilled sea serpent for better or for worse. Uh-oh. What do they have two of? Nada? All right, I said it was here to trade for that. Let's do that. Eighteen cards. Nine mana allows us uh, not yet to be able to attack and uh, cast a, a creature. So let's cast both creatures here. I guess the Frost Lynx actually doesn't do much being cast here. But it does set up the Sea Serpent being able to maybe attack next turn. I don't know. Um, let's start with the Vulture. Definitely want to cast the Vulture. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Lost our Soul Salvage, which stinks, but our Cavalier is still in the deck. No, I will play it. I'm gonna play it. Let's let's tap down Epicure. <clears throat> All right, everyone, chill. And Sea Serpent would die here, so we're just gonna say no attacks. Yeah, I like I like playing it because between having this tapped and like we just get to try and start attacking with the serpent this way. Cavalier, that's terrible thinking. Get your head straight, man. Look what you just said there. Everybody help Cavalier out. Uh, we are gonna go ahead and... 
Like, maybe they can attack with this, but we have some attacks. At some point, we got... This is a little aggressive, <clears throat> but we can't... Uh, sit back forever, so I'm gonna go ahead and attack. And there it is. Damn it. I'm there at 18. All right. And we're out of it. Five and one yesterday, one and two today. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, uh, let's see. I guess we don't need to do that. And maybe what we need to do is actually... This, this. This. Try it this way. Two debtors. Well, assuming Oppo figures it out this time, I'm going to give him credit. I'm going to move on from this. Not how we wanted to end this one, but they don't all go the way you want. I have survived Nico Bolas, and I will survive you. Yeah, hiding, hiding that golem uh, may have cost us that match, but I think uh, not having... I mean, eventually we just face that 8-drop, and with, without an answer, we're not going to beat it. Oh, well. We'll get him tomorrow, right? Hey, uh, yeah. Uh, say farewell to YouTube for now.